Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Adrian Iliasil, and I'm an engineer with the Cisco DevNet team. In this part of the course, we'll start using Postman, and we'll see how we can use that to start interacting with the REST API from an outside perspective. So in the previous course, we've had a look at Swagger and how we can try calls <clears throat> within the web interface itself. This time, we're going to take it next step, and we're going to see how we can use Postman or any other REST API client out there that um, you want to use. But for our specific purpose and use case here, we're going to use Postman uh, to get started. So you can actually download Postman if you don't have it yet. And if you're not familiar, um, you should be familiar by the end of this presentation. It's a very useful and easy to use tool. So you can get it from there. Uh, we have, I have the link here for you. Uh, different operating systems support this. So it supports Windows, Linux, Mac OS. Uh, get it from, for your own um, flavor of operating system. And then here what I have, I have a GitHub repo. It's a public repo. It's available for you. I have content pertaining to this course in there. I have the Postman collection and environment. I have the requirements once we get to the um, coding part of the, car of the class. I'm going to have there uh, the Python script. And there's also the requirements containing the libraries, the Python libraries necessary for um, our Python script to be able to run. So what you should do at this point if you want to follow along is git clone the repo. So you do a git clone, and then you specify. If you don't have git, you can install it. But git clone on, on this repo, you make a copy basically on a local machine of all the content that's out there in the repo. And then you have to import the collection and the environment in Python. And then I'll show you the Postman settings, how to disable the SSL certificate verification, beca because we have a self-signed certificate on this environment for now. So you'll have to disable the SSL certificate verification so you don't get an error that, hey, the certificate is not authentic. And then we will select the Cisco SD-WAN environment that I've also set up for you. And you should have it on your local machine if you clone the repo uh, on your local machine. Let's go now to Postman. My installation of Postman is right here. So what I've done is I've cloned the repo also on this local machine. And I've already imported my files, which are here, the Cisco SD-1 Postman collection and the environment. Um, I have them locally, and I have them imported already. And what that does for me, if I go under collections after that, I see here my Cisco SD-1 collection. And also make sure here in the upper right corner that you select the Cisco SD-1 environment. So for the SSL certificate verification, what you want to do is go under this um, key over here. You select settings. And you make sure that the SSL certificate verification is off right there. And then also make sure that you select the Cisco SD-WAN environment. The nice thing with Postman, if you're not familiar with it, is that you can build collections, which are groupings of API calls. And also, you can specify an environment for them. So if we have a look at our environment here, you can define variables that will be replaced throughout uh, your collection with these values. So here, what we have, we have the vManage variable. That's the name. And the initial value is this, which is the sandbox uh, that we have set up for, this, uh, for the purposes of this course. And you can use this sandbox also after you watch the course. It will be available for you um, after this course. Uh, the current value, I have the J username variable and the J password here. And these are the same username and password that we've used so far throughout the course and we'll keep using. And also, I have here specified the port, in this case, 8443. If you have more variables that you want to add, you're more than welcome to play around with this collection and with the environment. And if you have your own environment uh, and your own in instance of vManage, what you can do is just replace here your um, variable in one place, and also your username and password and the port. And then you can use 
all the codes in the collections automatically without having to edit each one of them individually. So that's our environment. And also I can show you here how to add more values, right? You can go down and you can keep adding new values if needed or change them right here. So I'm going to exit out of that. Um, so now let's go to our first call, which is our authentication call. So in the Swagger documentation part, you saw that we were already authenticated. Once we did try it out, it worked because we were already authenticated in a different web, in a different web page to, to the vManage instance. So the cookie got transferred between, um, between the separate windows. In this case, with Postman, because we're coming from outside, from a, a third party, perspective so we're interacting with the API from as a user from outside we have to authenticate we have to pass in our username and password so in this case you see the call it is by now you should know it's a post and what post means and this is hopefully you guys know by now but this is our endpoint slash resource, right, that we are making this API call to. Here you can see how you pass the variables that we define in the environment. You pass them with double curly braces, vManage, double curly braces, closed, and then comma, and then we specify the port, right? So this is how you specify the variables that we have defined in the environment into your actual call. So they will get propagated from here. vManage will get sandbox.cisco.com, sandbox sd -WAN, and then also the port will get 8443 will automatically get placed in there for you. And what we also have in this call is the headers. So we specify content type application, so it's a URL encoded form um, for the value of the content type. This is necessary in this case. You will see, depending on the API you interact with, these headers are different. So documentation here is critical to look and see what the API is expecting from you to pass as headers and as parameters if needed. And then next we have the body. Uh, also URL encoded, right? So it is not raw, it's not binary, it's URL encoded. And I specify two key value pairs here, J username. I will get the J username variable from my environment. And also the password will get populated from my environment so that I don't need to specify it every single time. Um, and that's pretty much it. We have our method post, we have our resource endpoint, we specify our header and we specify the body. So we're ready to actually do this post call uh, and to authenticate with the API. So to do that, we do send, clicking on send. And let me see the cookies, delete. And there was a cookie that was basically from a previous session that we've done. You might want to have to delete it so that you start a new session. That was expired, the cookie already, so it didn't work because it was already populated in Postman. So that's another example. And uh, another thing to keep in mind is that if you have already used this collection, authenticated, the cookie gets populated and it expires after a certain amount of time. So you might have to delete it and redo again. So you saw the error message contain HTML code. Uh, but if you don't get anything back, that actually means that the call went fine. We got a status of 200 OK here. And it took uh, a bit less than 200 milliseconds for the call to complete. So I'm authenticated. I got my cookie. So all the other calls, subsequent calls that we will make in this collection will use this cookie uh, as long as it's still um, available and not expired. So the body, if you don't get anything back and the status of 200 OK for this post call, then it means everything is fine. It went through. 
If you get an HTML code, and we'll see this also in our Python code, we will actually check if we get anything back as an HTML um, uh, code. We will know that the authentication did not pass, and we'll see how, uh, how we deal in the code in that situation. So now, let's go to get a fabric devices list. So these are all the devices that are part of the fabric. We've seen this same call, but in the Swagger documentation. So if you remember, data service slash device was also tested and tried out in the Swagger part of the documentation. And in this case, it's a get call, the resource or the endpoint is this slash data service slash device. Again, same idea, vManage uh, and the port get populated from the environment. The cookie is already there. And I'm not passing any headers in this case. So if I do a send this time, I get the output. It's the exact same output we got in the Swagger documentation. Is JSON file containing all the information um, in the output and I want to get to the data part of it so that we have a look and double check. It will be the exact same information we got in the Swagger part of, of the course. Here we go. So data, device ID, even the order seems to be exactly the same. So device ID is your vManage right, your system IP, your router ID, and then it's reachable, the status is normal, the device type, personality, what type of server it is, no groups, same exact information that we got over the Swagger documentation, but from a third party external REST API client, which is, which is Postman. So, if we scroll down, we see the site IDs, we see after that the vSmart, and all that information, all the vEdges and all of that. So this collection and the environment, like I said, it's available for you. Take it, modify it, add more calls if you want, share it back with the community. This will also be, a, be, a, be available on the Cisco DevNet code exchange. So we'll give you a link on there uh, on where you can find it on the code exchange too. There's a community where you can um, see what other community members are working on, what they wanted to share, um, and also you can take that, modify it, and share it back if you would like. So it's a great place, one platform, where uh, we're trying to bring all the code and all the samples that are out there into one place so that people can more easily find them, modify them, and use them. So if we go now to our next call, device status, uh, we see here the endpoint is data service slash device slash monitor. It's a get call. Um, and if we do a send, we get the JSON file output. And if we scroll through it and look at the data part, we see the vManage status is normal. Right, the host name, the site IDs for vManage, for vSmart. You can get the status. Very useful with one call, I'm able to get this JSON output. And then if I parse it and extract data, I know the status of all my devices within less than a second, right? So very useful in cases in which you want to start integrating with third party tools or you want to start automating your configuration or monitoring uh, solutions. And then last, I want to show you the device counters call. Um, this is also a get call in here. vManage port should be familiar to you by now. They're getting extracted from the environment slash data service slash device slash counters, not monitor in, in this case. So it's one level deeper in the REST API hierarchy. So I get the data, the system IP. This is one of my V edges right here. So the system IP 4463. Um, OMP peers up one, uh, and I have reboot count and then crash count here. 
So if I want to see how many times this device has been rebooted, I'm going to do this API call. I'm going to extract the reboot count value here. I can see it's two for this specific VEdge instance. So very quickly, in an automated fashion, I can extract this data and know it right away, and then parse it, do whatever I need to do with it. Um, reboot count for my um, other device here, for my vSmart, is three, right, and then crash count. So with one API call, slash data service, slash device, slash counters, I get this, this information readily available for me to, to massage it, do whatever I need to do with it. Um, so yeah, that's all I had to show you in this situation. Um, for this course, make sure you clear the cookie, like here, like you've seen me do, in case your cookie expires and re-authenticate again. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. Um, the SSL certificate verification under settings, you would not want to do this in a production environment. You should have, of course, uh, value certificates issued by a, root of, by a certificate authority. And um, going back to my presentation, quick recap, uh, we've had a look at Postman. We've seen where you can download it. We've had a look at the um, GitHub repo uh, data that I have there for you. I cloned this in advance on the local machine here. Then I imported the, the Postman environment and collection. We went over the environment, what it is, how you can modify it, how you can add more variables there, how the variables get passed between different calls. We've seen then the collection with the four calls we have right now for available. There's going to be more added in there as we progress. Uh, have a look at them, modify them, play around with them, get more familiar with them, and hopefully you see the value in this. Uh, and as we progress through the course, you learn more and more, and by the end of it, you'll see that we'll, you'll be able to develop your own applications, your own Python applications in this case, uh, to start interacting with this and doing something meaningful at the end of the day. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it has been informative for you, and uh, I'll see you on the next course.